Hello again, I am Blunty, and I am particularly low energy today because I have spent the entirety of my energy reserves and then some uh, over the last three days at EV Expo, uh, which is a big gaming expo thing that just happened in Sydney over the last three days this weekend. To be frank, I was a bit skeptical about how the whole thing would unfurl because it is the first and only expo I've ever been to that is run by a gaming retail chain not an independent group as most expos and conventions are so i didn't know how the whole thing would play out and as a matter of fact i was pleasantly surprised the expo was actually amazeballs i had the best time it all kicked off with a big stage show style opening ceremony thingamajobby with video presentations on giant projector screens and smoke machines and for some reason I still can't figure out how it fits into gaming, some motocross stunts and a dance number for some reason. But I guess spectacle is for spectacle's sake. Something that was actually relevant to the theme of the show was a stunt dude dressed up like you know who creeping through the crowd climbing up a tower to an appropriately tense and dramatic music and a spotlight and then toppling off it like a drunken child playing Superman. It got a good reaction from the crowd. And thankfully this expo is not one of the dreary gang of events so petrified of the allure of a friendly face on a pretty girl in shiny clothing that it is banned or been bullied into banning the so-called booth babes. No, here the booth babes are still permitted and roam free and happy. Some were, of course, simply nothing more than charmless pretty girls who often looked bored or confused or just, uh, sour. But thankfully, some companies had the common sense to hire some help from girls who actually had some personality and some people skills so they could actually engage us gamer nerds in a friendly and welcoming manner. The Sennheiser girls were my personal favourite. They were absolutely charming, and one of them has a rescued blue-tongued lizard as a pet, which is pretty friggin' rad. Also, weirdly appropriate, seeing as blue as the sin has a color. And on that general area of gaming headsetry, there were tons around, easily one of the most prolific and popular accessories on show, and I've got a vid coming up focusing exclusively on them for a closer look at the listenables. And I'll have some full-on reviews of a couple of my personal selections down the road too. As you'd expect, there were all manner of controller variations and other gaming hardware to play with too. This kick-ass gaming chair with built-in speakers rumble and happy fun time rocking was one of the more unique examples, and I'll have a more detailed look at that in a later vid this week too. But for most attendees, the big draw was of course the chance to go hands-on with new and upcoming games. Many were still work in progress code running on beta and dev kit units. Some were even marked with big warning signs telling me I'm not allowed to video the screens because it's not finished yet, blah blah blah, which I really don't get. You're telling me you'll let any Joe Public go nuts playing this unfinished game code, but you won't let the likes of me show these people doing exactly the same to other members of Joe Public? talk about mixed messages. Oh, sorry, did I say mixed? I meant stupid. Stupid messages. Whatever. Anyway, I went hands-on with a whole bunch of stuff, most notably all the new shiny goodness of the Wii U, and this is the first time the Wii U has been publicly playable in Aussie land. I'll have a video focused exclusively on my Wii U impressions and experiences coming up, but for now, some of the highlights on the software side include the new Rayman game, which was actually pretty damn awesome, and I went back to play this a few times throughout the event. Nintendo Land was surprisingly good. I especially enjoy the shuriken slinging ninja-based arcade-style shooting it's another one I went back to again and again, chasing my high score. There was, of course, new Mario, always good, co-op was hectic, and outside of Nintendo's booth, I found myself going back for more rounds of the new Sonic Kart racing game. It's nothing really very new. It seems like a fairly predictable kart racer, actually, but it was certainly fun enough to keep bringing it back, so there's something special there. It played and looked great on the PS3 and the 360. There was also a singular Wii U version playable, but it was earlier code, so it wasn't running as smoothly at this stage, but all the fun was still there. Naturally, as a DC boy, I squeezed in a few brutal rounds of Injustice Gods Amongst Us, and it was pretty friggin' epic, and the special moves were every bit as completely effing bazonkers as they say they're gonna be. Again, it wasn't Final Code, but I can already tell you that I'll be adding it to my personal game library. It was a blast to play. Of course, the new God of War was always maintaining a long line of eager players. I've already gone hands-on with this and many of other Sony's new stuff in a recent video, so I won't drill into it again here. Suffice to say, fun stuff. 
and easily the busiest little port of call in Sony's booth was the All-Stars Battle Royale Playstations, and I got to talk to Omar Kendall, the game creator, so keep an eye on my channel for that chat coming later this week. Over at Microsoft, it was pretty much all about pushing the Kinect experience, which didn't thrill me all that much, if I'm honest. There was also some Xbox Arcade stuff, but weirdly the games on play there were all far from fresh or new experiences. I'm really not sure what Microsoft were thinking. Why not show off the new stuff? I, I don't get it. Now, I'm on record as saying that the Xbox is my current machine of choice, generally speaking. I play on it more often than I do the other consoles right now, but the Xbox booth was a bit... Well, boring to me. I spent almost zero time there. Oh well, better luck next time, Xboxes. But there was, of course, one exception to this red ring of derp, and I'll get to it in a moment. It should go without saying that there were constant big lines for the new Assassin's Creed and Call of Duty's latest self-clone. Strangely, I didn't hear a single COD player throw a homophobic slur at anybody else, which seemed weird and very out of character for Call of Duty players. Maybe they just save that for when they're safe at home, playing online, hiding behind usernames where they won't get punched in their greasy little faces for being pissy little dick wagons. And of course back at Xbox, the feverish Halo 4 fandom built quite a line of their own. Sadly with my media man duties, I never really had the time to burn waiting in this slow moving line for my own first try of the new Halo serving, which sucked. I love me some master chiefing. There was plenty of dancing, deeply, deeply shameless dancing, competitions wherever, accessories big and small of all types, people slowly dying of heat stroke or drowning in their own perspiration inside giant mascot costumes, a Master Chief made from Mega Blocks, which was awesome and I would have stolen if it fit in my pocket, giveaways and a special EB stall built right inside the expo for all those looking to pick up some of the gear in show they've just been playing with. There was a pre-order booth for securing the upcoming goodness you've just gone hands-on with. I've also got a video dedicated to chatting with the local indie game teams to see what they've got hitting the streets, and there's some good-looking stuff there, so keep an eye out for that video too. The expo was actually easily one of the best, most fun cons I've ever been to. There was a constant high energy, high excitement feel, lots of dancing and gaming and chatting and happy people and the layout was fantastic. There was lots of room so if you needed to get somewhere, you could get somewhere easily. You didn't have to try and push through great swarms of claustrophobic people. It even smelled alright. The air conditioning was working and the only places it ever smelt really bad were the uh, PC gamers. Everywhere there was consoles it smelt fine, but the PC gamers, yeah, there was the con funk floating around them. Make of that what you will. Do PC gamers smell more than console gamers? Certainly my experience, but this is just a small sampling, of course. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to start any arguments against PC gamers and how bad they stink, but you did. You stank. You smelled bad. Console gamers, not so much. <laughs> Amazingly, I was never bored, not for one instant. Usually at any kind of convention or expo or whatnot you get, there's a there's a low point in the day where you just go, <sighs> well, I've done a few laps, I've seen that, and I've done this, and I've got a couple of hours before that panel happens. Um, I'm just going to sit down for a while, I'm bored. I've, yeah, that never happened at the EB Expo. There was always something exciting and fun and something to play or something to look at or something to learn about or someone to talk to. and. It was just an amazing experience. It was one of the best experiences at a convention or an expo, whatever you want to call it, that I've ever had. It was brilliant. And I was completely shocked by that because, like I said at the beginning of this video, I didn't expect the show to run that well. I thought it was going to be all hard sell and buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this because it's run by a, a retail chain, a gaming, a, the biggest retail gaming chain that's left in Australia at the moment. And I was dead wrong. It was brilliant. And like I've just been talking about, I've got heaps of material for new videos. In fact, there will be a new video from the EB Expo about different kinds of stuff every single day this week. So lots of content coming to you from Channel The Blunty this week. And I want to give a special shout out to all of you who came up to me, the viewers and fans and, and subscribers or whatever you want to call yourself. People who know my face, people who recognize me. You're from the YouTubes. I know you. Shook my hand, had a little bit of chat. It was fantastic. As a matter of fact, in each individual day of this three-day expo, I met more fans than I do over the entirety of the weekend of just about every other expo I've ever been to, which is probably a fairly strong hint that I should be doing a lot more gaming-related content. And don't worry, because we're leading up to Christmas, there's a lot of gaming stuff coming out, so you're going to get your wish there.
But yeah, thank you to everyone who came up and said hi. If you saw me and were too nervous or too shy to come up and say hi, you're a fool. I very, very rarely punch people in the face when I meet them in public. It only happens a very small amount of time. You would have been perfectly safe to wave hi if you saw me filming. Thank you to those who waited until I put the camera down to come up and say hi and didn't interrupt me when I'm trying to do my thing. That was brilliant of you. And to those who I played games with, thank you. It was a lot of fun. And uh, it was, I, I, like I keep saying, I had the best time. And I got to meet the wonderful man behind the most recognizable voice in all of gamingdom. Hello, it's -a me, Mario. Hee <laughs> hee! And you're watching Blunty 3000. And I'm Mario, and Blunty's in a rotten mood. <laughs> like me. Have a rotten day. <laughs>